Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to Collider Videos for your consideration, our weekly video series tracking the ups and downs of award season. And we are at DEF CON 1. We had the Oscar nominations this morning. And take a look around you. We are at the Arclight Cinemas in Hollywood. Arclight is our partner on season two of Collider FYC, and they have been great about doing our Collider FYC screenings that we've been moderating here at the Arclight in Hollywood. What a great partner to have. On Oscar nomination morning, I am joined by the amazing Perry Nemiroff, the mighty Jeff Snyder. Guys, we have so much to talk about, but just overall, Perry, what did you think of this morning's Oscar nominations? Happy about a couple of things, bummed about a couple of things. I feel like it goes this way every, every single year, year uh -huh. but uh, you know, keeping my hopes up, the things that I'm still rooting for that are still in the mix, and uh, Booksmart will live on in my heart for the rest of my life and probably get repeat watches from here, but it had a good award season run. That has ended now. Oh, uh, boo-hoo, Jeff. I don't think anyone Let's was hear it. I'm, I'm, I was pleased on the whole. I was bummed uh, that the farewell was just completely ignored and that uh, Wild Rose did not get the song nomination, but you know, I, I can't argue with Joker getting the most nominations. I was really happy. I don't think that there's anything terribly egregious in the acting nominations people who shouldn't be there. So all in all, you know, a decent morning. I, I completely agree. There's maybe one acting nomination that really threw me because of the lack of a nomination, but we'll get to that in a second. Like you said, Jeff, Joker led the way with 11 nominations, then uh, with 10 nominations tied with The Irishman, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, then with six nominations, Jojo, Rabbit, Little Women, Marriage Story, and Parasite and then Ford versus Ferrari with four nominations. <laughs> Another thing here, interesting stat, that Netflix, Netflix is the first time a streamer got more nominations than a studio. Netflix led the way with 24 nominations, followed by the Disney family, as they're calling it now, with 23, and Sony back in a very big way with 20 nominations. Family. I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I just got that. <laughs> now you get it, okay. Well, Parasite made Oscar history. It is the sixth movie in Oscar history to get Best Picture and Best International Feature nominations. It is the first time South Korea got an international feature nomination. Six nominations for Parasite, Best Picture, Director, International Feature, Original Screenplay, Production Design, and Editing. But before we get to the categories, we got to talk about a big snub here is that no women nominated for Best Director. What's your take on that, Perry? Oh boy, where to even begin on that one? You know, I'm looking at the list of nominees right here and I think they all delivered exceptional work. So it's not like I'm looking at this list and saying someone isn't deserving. It also just happens to be a year where we have, let's say these five individuals, plus a whole bunch of female directors who also deserve to be in the category. And sadly, we only have five nominations. The one that I thought had the best possible chance, the one that I had my fingers crossed for, mm -hmm. Greta Gerwig yep. for Little Women. I really would have liked to have seen her have a place here, but. I'm also not ready to say, get rid of someone to make room for her. It's just the sad truth of the matter that there's only so many spaces to go around. That is the point. Jeff, what do you think? I always thought that if there was going to be a beneficiary of the female director push, it was actually going to be Lulu Wang for The Farewell. Mm -hmm. That movie was just completely overlooked today. Like they definitely, the Academy, they liked Little Women. It got a Best Picture nom. It got, she got a screenwriting nom. Again, I don't know who you take off from, from these five. I thought yep. they all did great. Uh, this is, you know, the, the what is it, the fifth or sixth or seventh adaptation of Little Women. I think that if Greta Gerwig had delivered another original movie like Lady Bird, it might be a different story today. Wow, that is an excellent point. Like you pointed out, Jeff, no nominations for The Farewell, no nominations for Uncut Gems, not a good morning in the major categories for A24, which won uh, uh, for Moonlight a few years ago, best, uh, best Picture. Also, no nominations at all, not even for Eddie Murphy, for Dolomite Is My Name. Now, Cynthia Erivo is a double nominee. She had a good morning because she was uh, nominated for Best Actress for Harriet, also Best Original Song for Harriet, but she's also the only actor of color nominated in the, act, the, the, the 20 uh, uh, acting uh, uh, places. So what's your take on that, Perry? I was shocked. Yeah. I knew that she was kind of in that question mark group of mm -hmm. could get in, maybe not. And if I were to, you know how we rank our top fives? If I were to rank that second tier of people who could crack and get into the category, it 
wouldn't have been her. She would have been at the bottom of my list, not because of her performance, but the overall quality. She of was the on movie. the bubble, she, right? She was definitely on the bubble, mm -hmm. but she is the best thing about that movie. I thought Harriet was fine. The movie overall is not Oscar worthy, but yeah, her performance in it is great. So happy to see it, but obviously, you know, that bumps. It's like I wanted Aquafina to get in here. Uh, well, if, well, if I'm being honest about my personal mm, preferences mm. as far as the folks that I was rooting for. Okay, Jeff. Yeah, I thought that Aquafina would be the beneficiary uh, beneficiary of an, a, a farewell push. Obviously, completely misread that situation. I don't think that there that there was a lot of depth in this category this year. Like you know, because who else are we talking about getting snubbed here? Lupita. That's really it. it I did think Lupita right? had the better chance to get in, though. I, I I just I never thought that that was an Oscar worthy performance, to be honest, or. Or, or film, um, and so even though I haven't seen Harriet, uh, and I think that that could be a problem for her in terms of winning, like they need to get people to see this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I'm, they will I'm, now. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm delighted that, that she made the cut. Well, She's you know a great what? actress. I, I think that, seriously, I mean, I hate to say that timing is everything, but in, in some, sometimes in the Oscars, especially for the nominations, the timing is everything. Let's say Us opened in October. I'll bet you Lupita would have been nominated for lead actress, but because it opened in what uh, March, uh, it you know it was too early in the year. It just got overlooked. You might be right because one is it so too early in the year that you can't keep the talk going all the way through to award season. But also when you release a movie September, October, November, December, it automatically puts it in a certain kind of conversation that didn't happen right. with its earlier release. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I, I don't think that Universal did itself like uh, any a disservice by releasing that film in March in terms of awards like it, it it was very successful like you know you, you make these movies to make money mm -hmm. and people were talking about Lupita for the rest of the year I don't think that she like sort of disappeared from the conversation no you're right um, you're right yeah okay well uh, Scarlett Johansson had a very very big morning she got her first two nominations she is a double nominee best actress for Marriage Story and best supporting actress for Jojo Rabbit she is now the 12th actor in Oscar history to be a double nominee in the same year, joining the ranks of Jessica Lange, Sigourney Weaver, Julia Moore, and Jamie Foxx. Uh, I both deserving, I mean, definitely marriage story, but do you think that Scar uh, uh, for Jojo Rabbit, that she was deserving of that, or was she on the bubble there? She was on the bubble as far as predictions go, but as, as far as whether she's deserving or not, I definitely think she is. I'm a huge Jojo Rabbit fan. I wanted to see it represented in the nominations even more so than it was, but mm -hmm. I thought that, yeah, she deserved to be in there, but I was surprised. I mean, you guys know what I was saying. I thought that all the support was gonna go behind Marriage Story, where her great performance in Jojo might have pushed her into that category more firmly, the mm -hmm. Best Actress mm -hmm. category, but you know, to see her get both, can't argue with that. Well, it's exciting for her on February 9th yeah. when she's there for two nominations. That's awesome. Jeff, what do you think of Scar Scarlett Johansson? I was delighted for her. Again, I didn't necessarily think that it would happen because I really thought Thomas and McKenzie was excellent in that film as well, and it would be tough for people to, to decide. Um, you know, Scarlett had never been nominated before. This is her, these are her first nominations. Two, yeah. Uh, so clearly the, the Academy has done a 180 on her. I think it really speaks to Jojo Rabbit, like a groundswell of support for that film. The fact that it got an editing nomination over Once Upon yes. a Time in Hollywood, which I'm sure we're going to talk about later. That's a, that's a big deal. It also got nominated for, for screenplay. So her being here, I think, speaks really highly towards that film's chances. Well, when the nominations were announced at 5.18 in this morning, and I was uh, ready to go, very excited, even more excited than I am right now. Do you even need coffee, man, in the morning? I, you know, I did not. Coffee. Oh, I did not have any coffee. <laughs> right. I just was so excited. I, I feel like this is, who needs a better caffeine than coffee, the Oscar yeah. nominations when you're movie geeks like we are? But the very, very first, first category announced was Best Supporting Actress, and the very first name that was read was a surprise. I would think that it, in relation to all the other nominees that we were predicting, and that was Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. Also nominated, Laura Dern, Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit, like we said, your girl Florence Pugh for Little Women, Margot Robbie for Bombshell. But the biggest glaring omission here in supporting actress, the biggest surprise of them all, especially when it came to the snubs, no Jennifer Lopez for Hustlers. Jeff, what do you think of that? <laughs> I, it, it really, it wasn't a shock necessarily because I saw that Scott Feinberg and some other people had started predicting that she was going to miss the cut. And I think that that came out of conversations they were having with Academy members where maybe they just didn't think Hustlers was an Academy type of movie. 
Um, I, I thought it was the sort of performance that wins this type of award. So I, I was ultimately surprised, particularly because they have embraced music stars. Lady Gaga got, got a nomination. Jennifer Hudson has won. Um, so a, a bit of a shock. But Kathy Bates does have that one scene in Richard Jewell that really delivers. Uh, still, yeah, yeah, the a press surprise. conference, right? Yeah. Right. Yes. All right, Perry, what do you think, Jennifer? No, I was, I was absolutely shocked. <laughs> she, she was in my my subsection of predictions where I thought that was a done deal. She was getting all the love, and with that huge tip premiere it had, and then on top of that, it went on to be a big box office success. Everybody was talking about her, and also, if you look at it like. Kathy Bates wound up in the slot that could have gone to Jennifer Lopez. That shocks me more so than anything. I know that Kathy Bates has been getting a good deal of love for her performance in that movie, but I really did think that Richard Jewell was completely out of the conversation overall. I thought the fact that the movie came out and it basically did nothing at the box yeah, office, no, next literally. to nothing. I yeah. thought that the writing was on the wall at that point and she wasn't even gonna be in consideration in the slightest anymore. I, I was surprised in that JLo played the game this season. She did, she, she was out she? there. She, she was, was out campaigning. there campaigning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was surprising. But Kathy Bates is an Oscar winner herself. Like the Academy respects her. Yep, yep. That could I, be it. I, was, I would love to have seen a surprise nomination for Paul Walter Hauser who just acted the hell out of this movie and I think he is a phenomenal actor. No question that Paul Walter Hauser will get nominated for an Academy Award very soon. I think this guy is the real deal. Uh, okay, who wins, Perry? Who oh wins? my god, I still think Laura Dern wins. Okay, yeah, me too. I don't think there's Jeff? any question in that. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, we're going to do these predictions for the winners again, but you know, yeah, Laura I'd Dern I'd be shocked wins. if my prediction in that category I, changes over the, the course of the next few weeks. I think all the acting categories are frankly sewn up right now. Okay, well, let's get into supporting actor nominated Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Tom Hanks' first nomination in 19 years since Castaway. Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes. Al Pacino and Joe Pesci, just like you predicted from the very beginning, Jeff, for The Irishman, Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know, this morning, you just said this, that when we were going through the acting nominations, if there was any category that I felt like was right on the money, no arguments here, it's supporting actor. And I know you yeah, agree. Yeah, I, I think most of us had aced it on Gold Derby. This was pretty much the group that we had been predicting since... I don't know if I can go as far to say the beginning of FYC this season, but it did seem like this was the group. I mean, I I don't know who else would have snuck into this category. Yeah, so yeah. Th this was the easiest call I mean, for me. the, the answer is the, the, the SAG nominee, Jamie Foxx. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, and I mean, mm -hmm. Just Mercy is killing it with audiences. It has an A-plus cinema score, an A-plus. Um, but it just never caught on in terms of the award season, and that's why I did come around in that last week or two to Tony Hopkins. Yeah, for, absolutely. For yeah, I mean, you know, people were talking about Willem Dafoe for The Lighthouse, and even Song yeah, Kang Ho, yeah. who played the father in the Parasite, which Parasite did really, really well with six nominations. So uh, let's move on to some, uh, Best Actress. We have Cynthia Revo, like we talked about for Harriet, Scar Johansson, Marriage Story, Saoirse Ronan for Little Women, Charlie Theron for Bombshell, Renee Zellweger for Judy. All right, uh, big snub here, Perry. Yeah, mm. yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm very, very bummed to hear that The Farewell got no love, especially in this category. This seemed like, I mean, really, if I separate it again into my predictions of the obvious locks, Aquafina had moved further and further up on the list to being a lock in my oh, mind. Sure. So the yeah. fact that she was completely omitted from this category is just, I don't know, it's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Again, we already talked about it. Cynthia Erivo delivers a, a jaw-dropping dro performance in Harriet, so it's not like I'm sitting here saying, take that nomination away from her, but the omission of Aquafina has me very disappointed. But this is another category that, you know, kind of going with what you just said, I think it's a done deal. I think Renee Zellweger has been running away with this ever since the movie's tip from premiere, and I think that's just going to continue. Yeah, I agree. Jeff? Yeah, I think this is Renee's award to lose. I mean, as good as Scarlett Johansson is in Marriage Story, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know that they're just going to give her the award on her first nomination. No. I think that uh, Renee, th it's kind of been like fate accomplished. Mm -hmm. Right, um, Charlie is. I just that that that's that performance as good as she is. It's more about the makeup and Saoirse Ronan. <clears throat> she's like the Amy Adams of of, of her generation. <laughs> she's going to keep getting nominated for everything. Well, she's she so wins. fantastic, but I, I don't think Saoirse Ronan has a real shot here. Well, well, well with I, Scarlett Johansson, I do wonder. It's a wonderful thing to get a double nomination, but when it comes to actually winning one or the other, I wonder if the conversation then becomes being in two categories at the same time, does it split the vote? Whereas 
people might say, I'm going to vote for her in this one category. If there's two, what do I pick? I'll give her one or the other, and that kills her right. chances of that, both. That does kill the chances, but you know, when Al Pacino was nominated for both Sen of a Woman in lead and uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross in supporting, he did win lead. Jessica Lange, I think she was nominated for lead, act, uh, lead actress for Blue Sky, supporting actress for Tootsie, and she won for lead actress. But then there's okay. like uh, Sigourney Weaver, she was nominated for Gorillas in the Mist for lead. Uh, and uh, Witness, I th no, sorry, not Witness, a working girl. Uh, and she didn't win for either. So it, sometimes they, they come out with one, sometimes they come out with none. Uh, just back up to supporting actor. I forgot to ask your prediction to win for supporting actress. I mean, like, I think this hello, is Brad, Brad Pitt. Brad, Brad Pitt's <laughs> in a cakewalk. All right, moving on to best <clears throat> actor then. Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory, Leonardo DiCaprio Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Adam Driver for Merit Story, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, Jonathan Price for The Two Popes. Jeff, what do you think of the nominations here? Definitely uh, a bit of a surprise with De Niro not making the cut, Sandler, Eddie, Ta uh, Taron Edgerton, but Banderas and Price were both guys who we were talking about for like the fifth slot and it ended up you know, going to both of them. Um, I, I thought Jonathan Price was excellent in The Two Popes. The other three guys, Phoenix and Driver and DiCaprio, feel, felt like locks all along. I never thought that they were going to snub Leo. Like, I, I, I thought that with the, his SAG nomination and his Golden Globe win, that maybe there was a lot more Academy support for Taron Edgerton uh, than we were leading into. But in the end, you know, he missed it. And so, unfortunately, did Eddie Murphy and, and De Niro. You know, I think De Niro, maybe people were looking at him like they take him for granted as an actor at this mm -hmm. point. And, you know, he did produce The Irishman. You know, he's wearing so many hats in this movie. Maybe they're just going to, they felt like they would honor him that way. Perry? It really is uh, wild to go back to the movie's New York Film Festival debut and just how the conversation has changed. Because after seeing the movie there, De Niro is at the top of my list. And it has been a very steady decline ever since. And I almost wish I could go back on Gold Derby and have a history of my predictions and how they evolved oh, that would over be the interesting. course. <laughs> it would be because I think one by one he kept dipping further and further. And last minute, right before I left for the Critics' Choice Awards, I updated my predictions and I took Robert De Niro off the list. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, Jeff. I, I do want to say something because I did stick my foot in my mouth earlier this morning on, on Twitter. Uh, Antonio Banderas is considered a, a white actor, he is not a, a person of color. I think that the that is a different conversation than what represents diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yes, in, in, for the uh, intent and purposes of this conversation, he is just considered a white European actor. But either way you cut it, diversity uh, uh, and gender balance didn't, was didn't look great. Yeah. Didn't look great in this today. morning's nominations, which brings us to Best Director. Mm. No woman nominees. Uh, Bong Joon-ho for Parasite, Sam Mendes for 1917. Todd Phillips for Joker, Martin Scorsese, The Irishman, and Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No Greta Gerwig, no Taika Waititi, big snubs there. Uh, but again, like you said, Perry, who do you take off? I've got no good answer to that. No. And the fact that I have no good answer to that, I, you know, especially with the Academy, they do have a history of not including any female directors, mm -hmm. save for what, what is it, five times? something like that. Yeah, there's there's yeah, only five, been a very yeah. select group of women who have cracked this category here. And the fact that I look at this list of names and I can't tell you someone here should be omitted from the list, it's, it's challenging because I really did want to see Greta Gerwig. That was one of my favorite movies of the year and I think her accomplishments as a director in that are just above and beyond. I mean, you brought it up before. Yes, it is yet another Little Women adaptation, but in this particular case, if you saw the movie, I think that could only help when you look at what she did with that because I've told you guys this before, I have never seen or read Little Women before seeing my first screening of Greta Gerwig's version and it drove me to go and first read the book. I read the I book. Hope you're not finished, the only one. Finish the book. And yeah. when you look at what she did there, that's something else. And now I can't wait to go back and watch the other versions of the story on screen and see how her version differs from that. Because no, based yeah. on what I hear from everybody, she does next level work adapting something. Well, one thing I got to point out here is that while we've talked about how there aren't any directors we would take off this list, up until maybe a couple weeks ago, we weren't putting Todd Phillips on the list. We were putting Greta Gerwig on the list and not Todd Phillips thinking, oh, he'll get Best Picture nomination. And of course, Joaquin Phoenix, category we just talked about, is going to win the Oscar because all the attention is going to go to him. But now that Todd Phillips is on the list, they're saying, oh, I wouldn't take him off. What do you think of that? 
I think this is the right five. I mean, I had Joker in my top five this year. I think what Todd Phillips accomplished with that, the fact that it grossed a billion dollars, it, it struck a nerve, whether you want to admit it or not. Like, I think that Joker was the movie for that 2019 deserved, in a sense. Um, and he's absolutely deserving of this nomination. Okay, well, this uh, category, Best Director, no locks here. It could go to Quentin mm. Tarantino, and after last night's surprise win at the Critics' Choice Awards for Best Director, in which he tied with Sam Mendes for 1917, director Bong Joon-ho wins for Parasite, and he was not expecting it. He did not have a speech ready. He just wanted to eat the rest of his veggie burger, <laughs> and uh, that is a big boon, I think, you know, up until last night, my predictions to win, not just get nominated, but to win, I had a, a, a Parasite for Best Picture to win and Quentin Tarantino to win Best Director. But I think that's now going to flip. I think actually Bong Joon-ho will win Best Director and there's a strong possibility that Once Upon a Time could win Best Picture, although Parasite could still win Best Picture as well. I just think that if you look at last year, they gave Best Director to Alfonso Cuaron for Roma, and they gave Best Picture to Green Book. Another conversation. But Parasite is a far better film <laughs> than Roma, and Bong Joon-ho directed the hell out of that movie, and there's no other movie like it. It's the best movie of the year, period. So predicting Best Director, who are you going with, Perry? I think I might at this point be echoing what you said mm -hmm. about Parasite taking this award and then Best Picture going to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mean, I guess now you have my prediction for Best Picture, but I do have that at the top of the list right now. But briefly with Joker, because I watched it again. The yeah, other yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe how many times I've watched that movie in, the, uh, in, the past, <laughs> in the past two weeks. I watched it with my Nana too, which surprised oh, me even wow. more. She loved it. She loved it. And she was, I asked her, I'm like, who do you want to win all the awards? She's like, I want Renee Zellweger for Judy and I want Joker to get a whole lot. And after watching it yet again, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling very good about him being in this category. I don't think oh, he yeah. is going to have nearly enough momentum to change the course of the conversation to get the win at this point. But it's coming down to Tarantino, Mendez, Bong Joon-ho. And of that bunch, I'm going with Bong Joon-ho right I'm now. I'm going with Bong Joon-ho. I just in a split second when Bong Joon-ho won that, even, even though it was a tie, whatever, the fact that he won, that he was, he was rewarded not just for the expected international feature. Jeff. So we, remember the Jeopardy question that we were talking about? Did you guys see the final Jeopardy question the other night? No. It was named two foreign-born oh, directors yeah. who have both won Best Director twice, but they've never won Best Picture. So, okay. Okay. so you look at Ang Lee, uh -huh. who won for, for Life of Pi. You look at Alfonso Cuaron. Who he also won, won for Brokeback. I'm aware. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 or Alfonso Cuaron, who won for Gravity. Uh -huh. and the Academy uh, tends to give Best Director to someone who, who directs something of spect uh, a real spectacle, something that's just visually stunning. And I think I'm going with Sam Mendes for 1917 as oh. my front runner for the okay. best director okay. uh, Oscar. I think that the, the the BAFTA contingent within the Academy, the British uh, voters, there's, that's a huge swath of voters. I think he's going to get their nominations. And I think that honestly, I think women may have a, a tough time voting for Quentin Tarantino for various reasons. And you're going to see all kinds of mud slung in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I'm going with Sam Mendes. Interesting. Okay, so two bongs and one Sam. Who has a female right. screenwriter on his movie. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the big one, Best Picture. There were nine nominations, and I think, Jeff, you actually predicted that there would be nine nominations for Best Picture. They are 1917, Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And ladies and gentlemen, if you've been watching Collider FYC in season two with our partner here, Arclight Cinemas, you'll remember that Jeff and I had a little bet here about Ford versus Ferrari. I love Ford versus Ferrari. This movie made $200 million plus worldwide. It's a big hit. Everybody loves it. I think it should have gotten more love here at the Oscar nominations this morning. But as I predicted and bet with this guy, Ford versus Ferrari did in fact get nominated for Best Picture. So this guy owes me 20 bucks. Pay up, bucko. Scott, <laughs> I know that we had given Perry the money on the last episode, but Perry <laughs> gave it back to us, so here it is. Uh, Scott, when you are right, you are right. I thought that The Farewell would get that ninth slot. Uh, I thought Ford vs. Ferrari was absolutely great. 
but I, I wasn't sure if it would get in, um, but sure enough, it held off the farewell and knives out, so here you are. Thank you very, very much. Right on, you hear right here, ladies and gentlemen, 20 bucks that I got back from Jeff Snyder, because last year I lost 20 bucks to Jeff Snyder. So this 20 bucks is gonna go to breakfast and I'm gonna have me some waffles. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, talk about the farewell. The snub here, I mean, again, I mean, like the like didn't even get nominated for screenplay. I mean, for the, I can't believe it. I don't know, I don't understand what I, happened, no words, except, no for, except for maybe just the campaign wasn't as strong as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that conversation died down at all from Sundance. I mean, people were constantly talking about it. It had a very nice run at the box office, and it really struck a very personal chord with so many people out there. Because I walked out of that first screening, first thing I did was call Nana, and Every single person I've spoken to, I've had a similar conversation with. You just walk out of something like that wanting to embrace family, and that's something that sticks with you. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was going to stick with the Academy voters long enough to push it into one, one of these categories, whether we're talking about best picture, best actress, screenplay, something, and it is completely omitted. Yeah, it's a beautiful film, and, and I, it really, I feel like A24 must have dropped the ball. I don't know how else to describe this. Because it does, I, I haven't met anyone who really had a bad word to say about the No, film it's well. a beautiful film. And I, clearly it just didn't get enough of those first or second or third place votes. It must have always been seven, eight, or nine on everybody's ballots for it to have missed. Uh, and, and again, in a nine title year. You know, if, if it was eight titles, I might get it. But at nine, I'm, I am very surprised. Well, if it was eight titles, I bet you yeah, four Ferrari would not have made the cut. Yeah. But it did, and I think it took the place of the farewell. Any other observations, any other mentions? Uh, you know, for mine, obviously, as a big, massive space junkie, especially for people who watch my uh, Oscar reaction on Oscar night when First Man won Best Visual Effects, I was very excited. I love those kinds of movies, and I thought that Apollo 11 was a masterpiece film. I know I liked it more than you did, Jeff, but I thought that was a big snub in the director category. In the, uh, in the documentary. Do documentary. documentary. I feel First of all, like documentary always does something that it's like, whoa, like that just happened. They made that decision. I mean, it happens every single year. Yeah, well, you'd be my neighbor, got uh, snuffed, and so did uh, three Listen, identical strangers. It's what I'll tell, it's what I said to Scott before we taped. Like, Apollo 11 was very good, super entertaining movie. <laughs> and Scott says that the guy spent 11,000 11, hours or whatever going through all the footage. And that's, it is a, 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 a feat of editing, it's a real achievement. He didn't film anything. <laughs> the astronauts filmed everything. Like he didn't even. It wasn't even like. A, there wasn't even like a top But they had to sync up the video with the audio. Syncing up. That's you don't. You don't get an Oscar nomination for syncing things oh, wow. up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is what I'm I sorry. love about Jeff Snyder. I'm sorry. He tells it like it, it is. It was very good. Wow. No nonsense. He's not kissing anybody's ass here. He's what's, telling it like it is. What's the definition of what what is specifically required to get a documentary nomination? It's a different P form. Putting a camera a on a tripod form. and hitting record. You got to do that. <laughs> it doesn't, That's the start. It doesn't have to be like that. You can get honored for doing something different if you do it exceptionally and if that was the case here I think it's a very valid snub to have in mind maybe there are people in that branch of the Academy who didn't vote for it for the exact reason that you said but I still think the door is wide open with whatever you want to come up with creatively to fit in that category uh, another snub here so for best animated feature see I don't think it's a snub because I don't think the movie was that good uh, oh I do frozen 2 I mean I, was that a snub? Fro Frozen, Frozen 2 might not have been as good as Frozen 1. It is the highest grossing animated movie now of all time worldwide. And it's, I mean, it's a Disney movie. I think that the second we saw Frozen 2 and Toy Story 4 on the release calendar for 2019, it was automatically assumed that they were going to get in. And it's not like we have seen other uh, guilds or award ceremonies snub Frozen 2 thus far. That possibility did not cross my mind in the least. And, you know, I've heard wonderful things about I Lost My Body, Klaus, Missing Link just had a very big win. But the other one that I think is missing from this list is Abominable. I know that that uh. wasn't necessarily a lock to get in. Frozen 2 being omitted is more surprising. Really? I, yeah. thought it, I thought it was quite charming. <laughs> but that is one of the biggest surprises of the morning to me is no Frozen 2 in this category. All right. Uh, who, who takes it? Because, I mean, after Missing Link won the uh, surprise Golden Globe know. last week for animated feature, I'm still going to go with Toy Story 4 on this one. I think... I think at this point that might be the most likely safest bet. It's a safe bet. I think that this could be the category where we see a major upset, though. Well, you know what? We could. What do you think, Jeff? I think I lost my body was terrific. Oh. Uh, I mean, an absolute 
<laughs> just a work of art. Uh, and even though I had to Toy Story in my top five of the year and thought it was a, just a beautiful sequel, I don't know if they're going for the fourth film in a franchise. So I, at this point, I'm going to predict I lost my body mm. for the upset. I'm right, moving back to the big one, Best Picture. I know you're, who, who, who'd you pick for it? You're going with Once Upon a Time right, in Hollywood. Right now, I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in my top you? spot. Jeff? Okay. I, I have no idea. I have no idea what's going Dude, to win Best come Picture. On. I, Pick one. I, I, I guess a I would go your head. with Once Upon a Time right. in Hollywood, but I mean, 1917 is coming on strong. The Joker support today was really something. I think it's between those three films, it feels like. I okay. think that because there's such a big question mark in this category as for what's the front runner, one of the most interesting things, and this comes into play every single year, but I think this year in particular, it's so dependent on our predictions in other categories. Like, there's some sort of overall narrative at work here where, you know, whoever wins or loses in the Best Director category is going to inform what I think is going to happen in Best Picture. So I think this year in particular, keep an eye on everything. I think something like Jojo Rabbit could come out of nowhere. I wouldn't mind like, seeing like, that happen. There's real passion behind that movie that I don't necessarily see for really any of the titles on the list except for maybe Parasite. So, well, I, listen, I don't I, know. I, I, I love that the very last award of the night is the one that is not a lock. Like, like we're just gonna be in such suspense and anticipation watching the Academy well, Awards. Anything could happen in the next couple of weeks to change that, though. That's you true. Ne you never know. Can well, I point out one more? Yeah, please I don't, do. I don't are, wanna, we, are we go done? That's what the show is all right, about. We're still, we're still going to things that stuck out here. Uh, Obviously, best original song is something that I felt very strongly about. I think, uh, I really do think Wild Rose is deserving of an Oscar nomination in a multitude of categories, yeah. but the fact that best original song was its best possible shot when it wasn't mentioned when they announced those nominations, I don't want to be too extreme about it, but I was heartbroken. It was the first thing I looked at, actually, yeah. is did, did it get a nomination? Oh, wow. Um, it, it, I think I, Sean Fennessy said this on his latest podcast for The Ringer. I'm going to echo it. It would be the thing I'm most looking forward to at the Oscars, would be seeing Jesse yeah. Buckley perform that song. Oh, yeah. Uh, Missed and, opportunity. Like, what more did, did Mary and Ted really have to do? Um, so this is terrible. Well, for, for Best Picture, I, I'm still... You know, I, I agree. It could be Once Upon a Time. It could be 1917. It could be Jojo Rabbit for what you just said. Uh, I still am thinking that Parasite does have an edge. I mean, I just think that everyone loves this film. I think that, as we've seen in, in at least half the cases over the last 10 years, where the Oscar for Best Picture and the Oscar for Best Director went to different movies, I think that that's likely this year uh, and I guess if I really have to push comes to shove, I'm going to go with Once Upon a Time for Best Picture and Bong Joon-ho's Parasite for Best Director. Wait, just going back to Parasite really quick, how do you think that Best Foreign Film affects its chances Nothing. of winning Best it, Picture? It is, it is absolutely a lot for foreign. For you, international feature, as they call it. International now. feature yes. now. But no. if it's in that category where it is likely to win, Bong gets uh, Director. Best Director, so then you think they will not go with Parasite for Best Picture I think well. the movie Parasite gets Best International Feature. I'm going with Bong Joon-ho for Director, just like last year when Roma won Best mm -hmm. International Feature, yeah. or Best Foreign Film as it was called, and Best Director for Alfonso Cuaron, and then Best Picture went to Green Book, but I still think that this year that, that Parasite has a much, much better chance, I think, of winning Best Picture the big one that Roma did last year because it's just such a superior it's film. It's definitely a better film. It's a better film, and I just think that uh, I guess you got to give Tarantino a big prize. He, he, you know, he has two Oscars for screenplay, one that he shared with Roger Avery for Pulp Fiction and one that for uh, Django Unchained. But uh, I love that, you know, like you said, there's four or five deserving pictures to win the Oscar for Best Feature. And... Uh, it's going to be super, super fun to watch. Any other thoughts before we uh, wrap it up on this uh, Oscar? Score, score. score. Um, okay. okay. I was, because uh, we had debated about this on our episode where we covered uh, best original score. I was excited to see John Williams in the mix. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 50 what is second it? nominee. Beat out of Set, right. I think he has, he has the most of any living yep. filmmaker. 52. And overall, he's only second behind Walt Disney. Oh, well. With, with the amount of nominations he's received. But I, I was very happy to see it in that spot. I was disappointed no Alan Silvestri for Avengers 
Endgame because mm -hmm. I'm going to compare apples to apples in 2019. I think that Avengers Endgame is a far better score than Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. There were, there were motifs that stuck out of me when, when Avengers Endgame was over and other than the classic motifs from Star Wars, nothing really stuck out of me enough from this Rise of Skywalker. Jeff? Uh, would have loved to have seen Loose, but never really thought oh, it was going to happen. The other, such the, a good uh, score. The, other, the other four all feel like the right uh, nominees. I think uh, Joker's going to take this one. Um, oh, yeah, Joker, I think yes. It's, I think it's going to win. Yes. Jeff? Uh, I, I agree. I well, think, I, I got to tell terrific. you, being able to do Collider FYC from the Arclight Cinema in Hollywood was a very, very big deal. They have been just a, such a super, super duper partner with us on season two of Collider FYC. And if you're watching this and you live in Southern California, it is not too late. We have three Collider FYC screenings here at the Arclight in Hollywood this week. This coming Wednesday, that's January 15th, Perry Nemiroff will be moderating a post-screening Q&A for us with writer-director Jordan Peele. On Thursday, I will be moderating a Q&A with director Bong Joon-ho and actor Song Kang-ho for Parasite. And then on Friday, Perry is back moderating a Q&A with writer-director Taika Waititi for Jojo Rabbit. So once again, big thanks to our friends at Arclight Cinemas. Please share this with everyone. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. It is so great. This is a lot of fun. Are we done? Always. We're this done. What else you got? Yeah. Oh, I, I had two two other things. Okay, oh, go, please. go. <laughs> wait a second. I mean, for, first of all, I wanted to see Terminator for visual effects. The oh, Irishman, come on. Everyone was, wait, 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 Terminator and Alita. Uh, the Irishman was, out of visual was not that too. impressive in his visual effects. People had real issues with those. Dolomite not getting a costume design nomination. Mm -hmm. Like, even Jojo Rabbit getting, I mean, for what? Designing some Nazi costumes? I don't think I understand that. <laughs> but the biggest thing that we haven't talked about, man, so th okay. this, is, this is what we have to end the show on. All right, let's hear it. Is Once Upon a Time not getting an editing nomination. Yes. <laughs> That's huge. That is a big deal, and it really speaks to whether Once Upon a Time can, in fact, win Best Picture, which we're all predicting right now, aren't we? Yes, we are. That's a very yeah. rare thing to not have an editing nom to go along with it. Why, what do we think of this? Why, why is that such a shock to you that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did not get an, uh, an editing nomination? I thought it was a shoe in for a nom, even though it is one of Tarantino's longer films. It, I mean, it, it was long. It was too long. It was two hours and 42 minutes. Yeah, it needed yeah. like a 15 to 20 minute shave. But, um, I, I just, I, I thought it was definitely getting in here, and the fact that it didn't, it, 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 talks, it, it speaks to like a little chink in the armor, so to speak. Oh, interesting. Okay, all right. Good, good party thoughts. Any other party thoughts from you, Perry, before no, I, I mean, really wrap it up here? It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's well worth considering that. And, you know, it's, it's funny when you bring, up, uh, you bring up Once Upon a Time in Hollywood's length, because it crossed my mind immediately that maybe that was a reason that it didn't get in. But then we look at The Irishman, the Irishman which has, right. like, what, an hour on it? And that's still in the mix here. But I really do think that uh, Ford v. Ferrari in that one, if I had my choice, that was one of the ones where when I walked out of my first screening of that movie, the two technical things that stood out to me most, the editing, editing and, sound. and then also, well, yeah, sound across the board, but the, the score. I yeah, the score the score's great. One Absolutely. was Marco phenomenal, Beltrami. too. Did an amazing job with the score of that movie, for one, sure. One of the things that I'm most looking forward to now is watching all the short films. I, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like we never really get a good opportunity to screen the short films before the Oscar nominations are announced, but what they do now is they're going to do screenings in theaters, and we're going to get the opportunity to see some of these. So, I don't know, do, do your research and look some of these up, because some of the filmmakers that are attached to these films are the ones that we're going to be seeing for years to come. So Absolutely. That's just one of the areas that I really enjoy focusing on at this point. Jeff, are you good? I'm done. We can end the show now. Perry, are you good? I think I'm good. Okay. Until we stop rolling and then I'm going to think of something. Okay, well, that's what we'll be back next week for a brand new episode of Collider FYC. Once again, thanks to Arclight Cinemas and thank you for your support. Share, retweet, post, and thank you for your support. Until next time, thanks for joining us and FY, see you later. <laughs>